So here's one of my favourite games from last year, Wanted Dead. I've played through this thing multiple times now, loving every minute of it, and I literally can't get enough. It is essentially a love letter to 6th gen console action games, so you can perhaps imagine just how much that tickles my fancy. It's back to basics in the best way possible. No crafting systems or tower defences or open world map hijinks, just pure arcade fun. We got some very fluid hack and slash combat mixed in with some cover shooter stuff. We got some mini games and hangoutable downtime to break things up. And the whole thing's set across a bunch of neon drenched locales pulled straight out of 80s sci fi movies with a hypnotic synthwave soundtrack to match. In short, this is my jam. However, looking at the general lukewarm reception it got, I believe it's also one of the most misunderstood games of recent years, and I fully expect it to get a reappraisal down the line. It's got the makings of a cult classic for sure. This kind of thing happens from time to time, that a game comes out chock full of personality and unique ideas, and then for some reason gets poor to middling reviews. Some examples spring to mind, Deadly Premonition and God Hand both took a bit of a beating on their respective releases, but both are pretty legendary games now. And if I had to try and sum up Wanted Dead in one sentence, God Hand meets Deadly Premonition might not be such a bad description, so let's go. You essentially play a week in the life of consummate badass Hannah Stone, and along with your incredibly gung-ho team of super cops, you blast and slash your way across Hong Kong's cyberpunk future. The police force in this future are funded by Dower Enterprises, a global ultra-mega corporation who, unsurprisingly, turn out to be evil. Pretty early in the game, we do the whole Blade Runner thing of putting down some synth workers who've gone rogue only to realise that synths are just as human as us, and then we have an are we the baddies type moment. Hannah and her team might be merciless killers, but they're not monsters, so they decide to side with the synths and turn their murder skills against the big evil corporation and the PMCs that work for them. Pretty boilerplate 80s sci-fi action stuff, right? A la Robocop and the like, but I'm absolutely here for it. Now, maybe I should just reframe that story before we get into gameplay, because the way I described it suggests an edgy, serious sort of a game full of angst and complicated emotional dilemmas, but actually this whole thing goofy as fuck. Intentionally so, mind you, I'm pretty sure the devs were going for that B-movie type vibe, along with a good helping of swirly slash suda type wackiness. In between all the bloodbaths, you'll be doing QTE ramen eating, singing karaoke, playing shmups in the arcade, and getting into a whole host of other silly situations. We're going to get into that sweet vibe in a little bit, but the aforementioned bloodbaths do make up a good chunk of the core gameplay, so let's talk about how these missions actually shake out. Like I say, it's a week in the life type deal, and given the old school nature of the game, each day is very clearly segmented into individual missions. We always start out with a cutscene brief in, getting some chat about what we're rolling out to do, and then Hannah turns up armed to the teeth with her mates ready to rock. Our girl Hannah's packing some pretty serious firepower all throughout the game, but primarily we have a heavy focus on using her katana to hack and slash through massive rooms full of bad guys, Metal Gear Rising type feels. But she also has an infinite ammo handgun that can be used to counter or chain combos with the sword, and along the way she'll get her hands on rifles, shotguns, chainsaws, all sorts of stuff. You are never lacking for ways to destroy, dismember, and disembowel your enemies. Speaking of enemies, we got a pretty good variety of those here. You mostly find yourself squaring up against generic PMC type goons, big heavy gunners, speedy ninjas, but then there's also stage specific guys too. For instance, in this mission here where you're trying to quell the synth rebellion, we're going to be going up against construction workers with pickaxes and sledgehammers. And then in this nightclub level here, you're taking the fight to gangsters and crooked business types in close quarters melee combat. And let us not move on without giving a shout out to the bosses. Now I love a good end of level boss. In fact, when done properly, it's one of my very favourite things in video games. But there are so many ways to get it wrong, and even just things that are so overdone that I never want to see them again. I never want to fight another dragon, for instance, and I also never want to fight another boss where they jump out of the arena halfway through the fight and become invulnerable for a bit. But there's none of that nonsense here. The bosses in Wanted Dead are a joy. Not wishing to spoil too much for you, but they are mainly duel fights. You're just up against another human with roughly equivalent abilities to Hannah. You can parry them, stun them, counter them, and do basically anything to them that they can do to you. It feels balanced and satisfying, and I just really like it. Not to mention how dramatic they often are, taking place on rainy rooftops and the like. Very Highlander. The combat system is one of the most misunderstood aspects of the game, looking at some of the reviews I've seen. 
I think it's because this game has Ninja Gaiden alumni attached to it, people were expecting some kind of flashy character action, but Wanted Dead isn't exactly like that. There's no super long combos or air juggles. In fighting game terms, this would be more virtual fighter than Tekken. Everything feels very measured and strategic. It probably seems pretty wild to describe this game as measured given the chaos you're likely seeing in whatever clip I've put here, but no matter how bombastic the on-screen action gets, you always feel in complete control of Hannah's movements. All attacks and movements flow nicely together, and it's easy to cancel out of one thing and into another, so it's always very quick and intuitive to plan your next move. But it's not all slashing and bashing. As I mentioned, there are cover shooter elements here too, and the key to this game is generally about finding that balance. Sometimes you do need to hang back and launch out a few grenades or do a bit of sniping from cover to thin out the ranks, but you won't win by just doing that, you've got to get into the hybrid approach blending swordplay with guns. I would genuinely recommend this game just on the strength of the combat and the stage design alone, I really would. Even if the story was very boring and serious, the gameplay would redeem it. However, we already know that the flavour here is absolutely incredible. Divisive, I would imagine, but if you're a sicko like me, then there's plenty of insane shenanigans to enjoy. We're talking God Hand, No More Heroes, Deadly Premonition type shit. Awkward dialogue, bizarre humour, complete tonal whiplash at all times. You rapidly go from disemboweling bad guys to slurping noodles, to sniping synths, to chilling with the big cat, straight into getting a hilarious dressing down from the captain. Sir, I just want to say- You shut the hell up, Hedgehog. I ain't done yet. You motherfuckers are like my own children, and I cannot believe my own eyes when I arrive on the scene. Bodies, dead policemen, a crash helicopter, dead fucking androids, piles of corpses, uniforms or not, this shit is all over the news. And all of that happens within like the first hour of the game. But then we're also going to be having anime cutscenes randomly spliced in with the regular ones, we're playing in-universe retro shmups, and we're hitting up the vending machines for a nice cold Mr. Peppy which is right up there with Jet Cola and Hassey. In between most missions, you'll find yourself back at the police station, and there's a lot to see and do. You can go around and collect case files to flesh out the law. You can talk to the rank and file officers, most of whom seem to hate the zombie squad. That's the name of Hannah's team, by the way, zombie squad. You can play the claw grab machines to win replica figures of yourself, your friends, and even your enemies. Who commissioned these? Whoever it was, Hannah loves it apparently, as she will proudly display any figures that she wins on her desk. Speaking of Hannah's desk, take a look at the zombie squad office here, I'm pretty into this vibe. We got couches and beers and a nice big kitchen. We got a little gym area and our table for building model kits. You'll find that you learn more about the characters' habits and lifestyles just from moseying around the office, and I'm a sucker for that attention to detail. There's also four floors of this place to explore, not including the basement and the helipad, but Wanted Dead is full of surprises, and I'd like to leave some of those for you to discover for yourself. If you've watched up to this point, thank you very much. I do hope I've persuaded you to check out the game, or at very least done something to offset the dodgy reviews it received on launch. If you enjoyed the video, please hit me with a like and a nice comment, maybe consider checking out the Patreon if you're interested, and I shall see you guys in the next one.